Well, in our conversations, and and I've been uh, writing my book, uh, just kind of updating my book, Cash Flow Hacking. And uh, I don't know if you anybody who's watching this has ever written a book, but when you when you go to write a book and you really, you know, and I'm not talking like a little ebook or you know, twenty pages, thirty pages. Like this is probably going to wind up being two hundred, a big big two hundred something pages. Yeah. yeah, it's a big project, and it's and it's like basically. Um, everything that I've wanted to kind of like get on paper and, and organize it in a way that can have everybody understand uh, what they need to understand to, to make the right decisions. You know, yeah. I always, I've always, I've said forever, it's like, man, if everybody just understood what I understand, you know, right. like yeah. then, then it would be a different world, you know, they make decisions differently and it would just have such a great impact. And so, um, you know, doing this, has been just like a passion project and it's it's been a lot more work than i expected honestly because right. the deeper i get into it the more i the deeper i go it's yeah. like you know i think i'm gonna go to a certain place and then i just keep going um and it's been a really cool experience and at the same time um you know the the introspection and the uh research and the uh just really thinking about how to communicate the importance of whole life insurance right? Infinite yeah. banking, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people call it infinite banking. I just, it's properly designed whole life insurance and leveraged properly. Um, infinite banking is a great marketing term. Yeah. A lot of people would say, you know, Nelson Nash coined it. So I would say uh, infinite banking is more of a philosophy than a product, right? Like, because Nelson Nash at his core is just kind of like this Austrian economist, um, libertarian, right? free market kind of guy, small government, right? Like, and so you'll find a lot of people that like infinite banking kind of fall into that camp. Um, personally, I utilize infinite banking, the term, because it's a great marketing term. And I mean, that's it's, it's where gained I've traction. Yeah. It's gained traction. Um, but but at the end of the day, um, you know, I think a lot of people look at infinite banking as something that it's not. Um, yeah. And it's it's a you know, I, I rip on IULs a lot, um, you know, and and it's as much as I do love, and I want to, I want to put this caveat out there, this disclaimer out there is like, I love infinite banking when it's done the right way. Yeah. Um, you know, but I do think people need to be careful about not getting caught up in all of the kind of side notes. Good morning. They, you don't want to get caught up in all the side notes of infinite banking, i.e. the political stuff and like yeah. all the stuff that they get going. And, you know, you know, I fall prey to that myself sometimes because by nature, I am more of a libertarian mindset kind of individual. Yeah. Um, you know, so I get that. I get how that's like kind of like, you know, I'm off to a flame, so to speak, sometimes. Right. When you're when we're worried about like what's going on in the world. Um, but at the end of the day, we got to look at it is it's a properly designed whole life insurance policy that you leverage properly, that you manage properly. Yeah. Uh, and when you do, it will make everything you do in your life better financially. I always kind of do. You, do you remember um, the BASF commercials? Do you ever watch football growing up? Not really. I'm not no. a big sports no. so, person that much. So I grew up in the 90s, right? Yeah. Like I was, you know, I grew up born 1980. Yeah. Grew up in the 90s. So the NFL, every, every, uh, you know, week the NFL was on, yeah. you know, broadcasts were a lot different back then, obviously, but every week the NFL was on, BASF would, would sponsor the NFL. Yeah. And BASF had this tagline. It was just, uh, they would have these commercials. It was like at BASF, we don't make your fishing line. We make it stronger. We don't make your paint. Oh, we yeah. make it Our, brighter. Yeah. We don't make your this. We make it that, right? Like yeah. we make it better. Yeah. So their tagline is at BASF, we don't make the products you buy. We make the products you buy better. better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, the way I look at it is life insurance as an asset is missold a lot as an investment, right? Yep. And so I always kind of say whole life insurance is not an investment. It yep. just makes the investments you make better, yeah. right? It's the BASF of the financial world. I, and I think in, in that I came into this in a different point of view. Like, yeah. uh, and I would say I grew up in or, or lived in the south side of Chicago. Okay. Very different politically. Mm -hmm. uh, then, um, you know, where Nelson Nash probably grew up. <laughs> yep. Uh, and just a very different kind of mindset yep. and thinking about all of this. And, yep. and then I came into this and, and had I read some of the 
marketing, I probably would have been turned off a little bit mm -hmm. uh, from it. Mm -hmm. But as a business owner, as an as an activist, mm -hmm. as somebody who wanted to, you know, I, I remember uh, the what was the Wall Street thing that happened where they were like protesting Wall Street? Oh, yeah. Um, there was that that was happening while we had the coffee shop and all this yep. kind of stuff yep. was was where I was from. You guys might hear some background here in yeah, the they're getting in, pretty loud out there. in here, but hey, we're doing this live. We're doing it. <laughs> I was like, uh, what? Hotel lobby. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so so, but but learning. Hey, I need to have some stability in my business, regardless of whatever happens. If there's like riots in the south side of Chicago, yeah, uh, I need to make sure I overcome that. Uh, not that there would be, but there was, <clears throat> you know, during that time, there was some interesting things uh that happened right yeah and so from a from another point of view politically we can we can argue politics and all of this but in essence what this does is just build a really solid safe place mm -hmm. not an investment that i can use for possibly investments mm -hmm. or for a stupid flood that i had to experience that it got me through that Right. Um, and there's so many other people out there that are like, I you all this or or I can do exactly what you do. And um, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you mentioned this in one of your videos, the yeah. arbitrage <clears throat> conversation. Yeah. And a lot of times people, as I talk to clients, too, they're like, well, I could do this. I could do that. Yeah. And I'm like, there's there's sometimes going to be it's not always up and to the right. The policy, as you build a properly designed policy. There is a cost of insurance in the beginning, right? But uh, from a guaranteed point of view, it will go up and to the right as long as you do your part. Right? Totally. Yep. But uh, you have to do your part, one. And But life isn't always up and to the right. That is not <laughs> that the way is life the is. Um, and so I've, I've had to deal with some clients that are like, yeah, you said this. I'm like, well, you didn't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you were talking about, I think, in a video about uh, loans. Yeah. Right? And using yeah, yeah. the policy loan. Yeah, I just did that one yesterday. Yeah. And, and um, this was something I, I, I've had clients before where I've, I've totally helped them get out of debt. Yep. And they never did what Nelson Nash says is, you know, uh, don't steal the peas from your own grocery store, right. meaning pay your loan back. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, you need to like, Pay your loan back and then they get mad at me saying well you this didn't work you said this i'm like you didn't learn to budget yeah all right yeah have yeah. you seen that in yeah some of those conversations you know yeah i think it's it's like anything else it's it's at the end of the day you never want to put your money into something that you don't understand right yeah. and yeah. so you need to understand i think there's a lot of misinformation on the internet right now about um the more popularized uh, infinite banking becomes, I guess I'll put it this way, the more popularized yeah. the infinite banking becomes, the more sensationalized it gets, the more kind of clickbaity uh, titles there are that are out there. And they look really sexy. They look like amazing. The idea of positive arbitrage, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's a great like marketing thing. Yeah. Um, but it's no better than a lot of the people that are selling IULs and and misrepresenting, yep. you know, what what an IUL is going to do for you. And so I, I just felt kind of really compelled in the last week to do a couple of videos that, you know, talk about the truth about infinite banking, the, you know, how policy loans work, how yeah. arbitrage can work uh, and how it is. You know, I just did this video. It's, it's, it's talking about like over the past 40 years, can you make positive arbitrage in an IU, or in a whole life policy? The answer is yes. If you wait and let the policy mature enough, and and if you uh, you know if if you do it the right way, if you use the right companies, non-direct recognition, all these different things. However, even though you could, doesn't mean you always will be able to because it's very circumstantial. Yep. Not just on the policy and the maturity of the policy, but also environmentally in the fact that we've been in this decreasing interest rate environment. Yeah. And at the end of the day, uh, you know that is what it is. Like as interest rates are going down. The dividend rates lag, so rates are lower than dividend rates, and so that's created this environment. Now, eventually, they're going to cross over. Yep. Rates are going to go up, and guess what? Dividend rates are going to lag, meaning interest rates are going to be higher than the dividend. 
And so this whole idea of positive arbitrage is more environmental and circumstantial than it is principally driven on how these things work. And I think it's important for people to understand that.